three, two, one. Hello, Bulldog fans. Welcome back to Davis Wade Stadium, Scott Field, where we only talked a few hours ago. That was before the game. Now, after a 35 to 10 Mississippi State victory, Steve, I think you and I would agree this game, maybe not statistically in some ways, but at final score wise, how the game did, in most ways, it played out pretty much the way Coach Dan Muddle and the Bulldogs, and we honestly expected. Yeah, David, a 35-10, I think you and I talked, maybe 31-10, that sort of thing. We thought I think I said 28-7, to but, you know, what yeah. the heck. The, the margin's basically the same, and State did cover, you know, for those that care about that sort of thing. Maybe. So, uh, But, yeah, David, it's there's some teachable moments. You win the ball game big without a lot of trepidation. We talked about that. You're able to play a lot of play, people, not get any serious injuries. I mean, football's a physical game. There's always going to be bumps and bruises. But, David, it's just what the doctor ordered, a big win without a lot of issues, but some teachable moments and things Bulldogs can do better. So the coaching staff will definitely keep them out of their purse clippings this week. Let's take a let's overlook for now some of the things like uh, Nick Fitzgerald was not sharp in the first half throwing the ball. He was great running the ball, and they had some mistakes there in the second half and some turnovers that let BYU briefly seem to have a little hope there. Let's just get back to the fact BYU is a physical team on both sides of the ball. Mississippi State showed they are much more physical as you would expect an SEC team to do. But 306 rushing yards on 53 attempts, and some of those were giveaway attempts as well. The Bulldogs came back and did what we thought all along this season they should do: pound the football. And, David, basically you had an SEC team, a good SEC team. I think sometimes the, the biggest critics of the Bulldogs are Bulldog fans because we, we think we're Alabama sometimes. We're not. But the, this is a good team taking a step forward, and they handled a non-conference team that was struggling the way that a good SEC team should, and that is coming out and physically dominating on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And that's really what happened, David. Once State got a lead, they shortened the game on them. Nick Fitzgerald, Eris Williams took over. Good runs by Nick Gibson and Colin Hill. So really by the – a committee type deal but yeah exactly what needed to happen yeah and uh and even though like i said nick was not sharp in the first half his receivers bailed him out a couple of times there were some really impressive throws by donald gray uh catching them under pressure there were bodies draped all over him and several pass interferences were called as well this is the most physical the bulldog receivers have played in the passing game i don't mean the blocking things like that but they really kind of toughened up themselves and i think they showed some work from the open date that they just had to get more physical they're not going to separate on speed so they might as well use their strength to make some separation for fitzgerald to find them yeah, and, and Nick had to make some throws and some tight windows there. But I thought the best play of the day was Jamal Couch. The, uh, you ran the fade, and he's out there doing a little hand fighting. He wins the battle two steps behind his defender, catches it without any issue at all. That's something Bulldog fans needed to see, and more importantly, opponents needed to see on right. film yes. so that they will have a, you know, that in the back of their minds thinking, you know what, we don't want to walk safeties down because they do now have a home run threat. And, and Jamal Couch, and I asked Gabe Miles and Donald Gray both about him in the postgame, both of them have said he's really begun to take some steps in a positive direction, so that's big for State. Offensive line, uh, we told you in pregame, Martinez Rangel would not play. He didn't even dress out today. He was on crutches on the sideline with the boot. Still questionable Kentucky as well. Greg Allen stepped in, did a good job. A little scared there where Darrell Williams had to come out briefly, but he was back two snaps later. Didn't know Michael Story was not available today, so the Bulldog line was shorthanded. But they were able to patch some things together and really overpowered Brigham Young where it mattered. Almost 550 yards of offense, and quite frankly, David, other than a couple of silly mistakes, they right. could have had 600 yards offense Easily. in this ball game. They had a touchdown pass that was overthrown. And sure. Okay. Darian Parker comes in uh, when Darrell Williams goes out. Deion Calhoun slides to left guard. So there is some uh, musical chairs there, but you're right, David. The offensive line, a patchwork offensive line, comes out and plays a very physical front from BYU. And just I know the records are what they are, but a lot of these guys are 23 and 24 years old going up against some teenagers. And so uh, in that respect, you're good. To, it's good to see this team have some consistent effort from these young guys because this might be the line for the next week or two. And I believe a couple of weeks ago it was myself, you know, not to take a bow here, that it dug up the fact that uh, Nick Fitzgerald and Eris Williams had already set the record for Mississippi State players with 100 yards rushing together in the same game. And that's some pretty darn good names there ahead of a quarterback who can run the ball and running backs who can run the ball. But they're a really special combo out there. And, of course, it took uh, end of the game for Eris to get over it and to get that touchdown he'd been itching for for so long. Fitzgerald, of course, you know, there he is, 103 uh, rushing yards net, uh, Eris 100. And, by the way, even though he wasn't great passing for much of the game, Nick Fitzgerald probably had the best tackle of the game on his pick where he threw his run back. He stayed with the play and made the stop. So it just showed the competitiveness that Nick Fitzgerald has burning in him. It's true, David. I mean, you never want your quarterback to have to make a tackle, but out in the open field, 
a lot of guys give up on that play. He didn't. He went and made a tackle. Didn't you know? Didn't put himself in harm's way. But he goes and makes a tackle. And uh, you know, I, th- I think that kind of slowed some things down. BYU had to settle for a field goal there, which kind of was a win for the defense. And then they get a touchdown late, thanks in large part to some more Mississippi State miscues. This is really a ball game. When you take a step back and you kind of remove the emotion from it, State gave them everything they had, and yes. State took everything they wanted. Turning to the defensive side, State had some missed tackles out of the game, but they were more, you could see veterans catching the ball for BYU and making spin moves, things like that. But it meant that they were giving up a little bit of speed, but they shed the first tackle. State got them usually on the second tackle. A little frustrated, but the dogs adapted to that. They also picked up on the fact that BYU, because their quarterback is still not super mobile, was going to throw more bubbles and more screens than they'd seen in the previous six games the Cougars played. They adapted that very well and started making those tackles. They did, David, and, and you know, that's kind of been a trademark of this team. Issue. They've tackled really well. Today they did look a little rusty at, at times, but you're right, David. Sometimes you've got guys out there that, you know, in open space, you win some, they win some. BYU won a few early, but State did kind of settle down and I thought played pretty well, especially down the stretch defensively. I think what did BYU end up with 150 yards, 160 yards, something around there. A, a net of 176 on just 46 plays. They only had the ball 23 minutes. Mississippi State is not a team that usually controls the clock that much because they score faster. Today they took a lot of long drives, scored points, and just kept BYU from handling the ball, and it showed. I, I thought in the, the second half, BYU, particularly third quarter, it seemed like they almost gave up, and if not for those t- turnovers and a couple of penalties State made, I think the Cougars were just about ready to punch this one in. I think it's true, David, and I, I think a lot of it had to do, like we talked about them again, and it becomes almost a self-fulfilling prophecy when you've lost as much as they had this year. You get a couple scores down, you start thinking, here we go again, and that's really what happened. State got up 14-0 or 14-3, whatever it was, and then next thing you know, the ball game was over. When they scored on that possession right before the half, you had a feeling then State would come out hungry in that second half. They did and put the game away. And essentially at that point, it was just a matter of what the margin of victory would be. Right. The Cougars only had eight first downs all game, and two of those came in the first series of the game until State's defense finally didn't give up yards on first down and shut them down. And let's talk to another key to that yardage and possession time and other things. He won't get any kind of awards, I don't think, for player of the game or anything. But Logan Cook, 53-yard yes. punting average, Great, great placement, and as Coach Mullen said, if he'd put a little bit more back English on one of them, it would have been a touchback at the one-yard line for Chris Rayford yet again. Cook is showing why this guy has pro potential. He is, David, and he's been a real weapon for State, and that's been the thing with him. Now that he's healthy, he's struggled with some injuries. He struggled a little bit with consistency. He's always had the ability to make the big kick. He's starting to put it all together this year. I know Steve's got uh, obligations coming up, so we're going to cut this a little bit short today. But, again, let's not underrate this 35-10 to 10 victory for the Bulldogs. Yeah, there was some frustration in the third quarter. I saw some online people getting upset about, oh, that's terrible, it's awful. Relax. The Bulldogs were in control. They let up a little bit, but when Brigham Young threatened, the defense rose up, the offense came back and scored. They took care of business today, which is exactly what they wanted to, and as no less than Nick Fitzgerald pointed out, they came out reasonably healthy, they came up with more confidence, and now, as Nick said also, it's time to get back into SEC season. That's right, David, and you fans, we'll give you a mulligan for today. It's a BYU game, and you expect the state to win it handily. It's a 3 o'clock kick next Saturday, and it's Nick Fitzgerald. I gave Nick Fitzgerald an opportunity to stomp for the team. The Bulldogs are going to need you here. It's a big game. It's going to be big for bowl pack and order and that sort of stuff. But this is a ball game we expect Mississippi State to win. But it is going to be kind of a coin flip type game, so you need to be here to give State the big home field advantage. Right, because Mississippi State has struggled with Kentucky. They've, yes. they've won most of the game, should have won last year, let that one get away. But they have rarely blown the Wildcats out because something about that matchup of Stoops and Mullen makes for a really interesting game. So you won't lack for intensity next week. Also, remember your homecoming queen, Victoria Vivians, you know, first chance she's had. And I think, for, as far as I know, the first Lady Bulldog to serve as homecoming queen ever here, fittingly. So there is no excuse not to be here. We'll be keeping you updated on the weather forecast. But for now, I'm going to let Steve run downtown. He has a book signing here in town. Flim Flam, still selling well? Yep, still doing well. We should top 6,000 sales this weekend. So from Scott Field, Davis Wade Stadium, for Gene Swindoll, Mike Nemeth, this is David Murray and Steve Robertson reporting. Bulldogs win 35-10, to now 4-2 on the season, getting ready to jump back into SEC play.